Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to model some very basic archways and pillars. These are super useful. I use this kind of stuff all the time in like fantasy style renders. It's really helpful to just have these for scene building and you can use it to make so many different kinds of structures and just, uh, it's very easy to fill out environments with tons of these everywhere. So I use this kind of stuff all the time and I'll just show you how to make some really simple ones in this video that are very easy to model. Okay, so before I start, I've got references open of just, I, I just went on Google, typed in ancient Greek pillar. And uh, this is going to be enough to just go off of here. You could use pure ref and drag these in there and then set up a whole reference board if you want or whatever. But I'm just going to do this. I'm going to have this off screen, but just know that normally when I do this, I will be looking at this off to the side somewhere. Okay, so with that being said, let's just jump in here and let's get started. So to make a basic uh, pillar or archway, let's just start with, uh, let's start with a pillar. So the easiest thing to start with is probably just a cylinder. So you can see this is going to give us the base shape for a pillar, right? It's just a long cylinder. So we can just take this and scale it in like this. And maybe let's uh, let's make like a slightly thin, tall one kind of like this. I think that's gonna be good. And for the top and bottom, you could, there's a few ways you could do it. You could go from here and just like model it out here and, and do stuff like this. That's one way. And then use a mirror modifier. You could also just do it in kind of separate chunks where you duplicate this object and then just kind of like morph it into the shape you want and then join it all later. I don't think uh, it really matters what you do here. Like, it just depends what you want it for, right? Like, um, if you are going to be looking at it super up close and you need this to be, like, connected, this is probably not the greatest method because these are going to be separate and it's going to be hard to connect them. But for our purposes here, I think it's going to be no problem at all. Let's keep it all in separate chunks and then we'll uh, join it all later. Okay, so I'm going to have the sec second cylinder just kind of loosely connected there. Uh, so it's a separate object. And... Let's just uh, kind of morph this into a shape that seems kind of right for this. So one thing I'm going to be doing a lot is selecting edges like this. So the way this works is uh, I'm in edge select mode up here. So we're just when I click around, it's going to be selecting the edges of the of the mesh. And to select a row of edges, you probably know this, but just in case you don't, if you alt, hold alt and then click one of the edges, that will just select a row of edges all the way around like this. I'm going to be doing that a lot, so you need to know that. Uh, so we'll just get rid of this. Um, and then, so I'm going to select these edges here and let's make sure the scale is applied. So just control a apply scale, just so that the bevel is going to be the correct size. And let's just hit control B and we can scroll to increase the segments here. And I'm just going to click. And then before you click off of this, uh, you can see that menu is gone now, but if I bevel and then click and then stay in here, I can actually open up this menu here. And um, this actually lets you do a custom bevel shape so you can kind of draw in the exact shape that you want this curve to follow. So if I switch this over to custom, you might, you've probably seen this before if you watch my channel, like this is what, one of my first videos that showed this, but just in case you haven't seen this before, I'm gonna take this curve here. You can actually just choose one of the presets here. These look pretty good too. Or you can just draw some kind of like squ squiggly line along here. And you can see what this is doing is the line we draw here is getting reflected in the shape of this bevel. So if I move this around, it's going to be affecting how this curve, uh, how this curve forms along this edge here. So let's just increase the segments till it looks good. You don't need that many. I think eight is going to be probably fine for this. And that's going to be a nice, easy way to add a lot of detail in here and repeat this a bunch of times. Okay, so I'm going to just tab out of here. That seems pretty good. And then let's do that again. So let's just add a loop cut here. Let's take this, extrude it, and then just scale it outwards. Let's take this edge again and just do that same exact bevel. And if you get like some really sharp edges, you can just take that one, either just increase the segments before or just do a one segment bevel after that. So maybe let's just take this in now and uh, just kind of morph this into place a little bit better. I can just grab these, pull this down a little bit. Let's shade it auto smooth. And same with this one, shade auto smooth on both of these. Now, if you zoom in really up close, you can see the individual segments, but I'm probably not gonna be using this super up close, so I don't, I'm not gonna really worry about that. You probably won't be able to tell if it's like part of an environment. So uh, if you need to be looking at it up close, obviously increase that so it's not so choppy, but for now, this is gonna be fine. Okay, and then let's add, let's add a cube on top. So let's go, I'll just put the cursor here. So that's uh, shift S brings up this menu. And I can just hit cursor to selected so that when I spawn in a new uh, object, like a cube, it'll just be wherever the cursor is. 
and then I can just kind of flatten this out into the base or the, the top, whatever you call it, the top of the pillar here. And this can be on the base as well. So I'll just kind of put it into what seems like the right shape. And then we can probably just add a uh, bevel modifier on here. Let's apply the scale again so it actually shows the correct uh, proportions. And then this is really finicky here, but if you just hold shift while you move this, the, the slider, then it'll, it'll, be, uh, it'll be much easier to dial in the exact amount you want. So we'll just do like right there. Okay, and then to get this onto the bottom part of the pillar, we can just duplicate this. I'll just hit, um, if I hit Alt-D, it'll actually make a linked duplicate. So I'll just Alt-D, move it down here, and then let's scale it by negative one on the Z axis. Just come here and then just kind of plop it in right there. Easy peasy, okay? There we go, we've got a basic pillar, nice. Okay, and of course, you could keep going here. You could keep adding edge loops and adding extrusions and bevels and detail all over the place as much as you want. I'm just going to move up this one off to the side for now. Uh, and then let's maybe just bring it up to kind of like the floor of the world here. And I'm going to leave this one disconnected for now because I might want to reuse these pieces later. But let's just take this duplicated over here. I'm just pressing Shift D because I don't want a linked duplicate. I want it actually unlinked. And then what I want to do is... I'm, I kind of want to have a variation of this because I, I don't want just one. I might want a few of these. So let me actually delete this here. Let's select these two things here and just put the cursor there. So we'll just do cursor to, to select it again. Remember this menu is shift S to bring that up. So cursor to selected. That'll just kind of put the cursor between these two points. And then let's add another. We could do another cylinder or what I might do is uh, I'll show you another kind of version of this you can make really easily. And that is a with a circle. Uh, I might actually increase this one to 64 because I'm going to be making, I actually don't know what you call this, but if you go into edit mode, we want to select, I'll just, I'll just show you what I'm doing here. If you just go into uh, edit mode, select all the vertices at the top here, press the select button and then go to uh, checker deselect. You can actually select every other vertice and then you can just scale that in and then that's how you get this kind of like offset uh, effect. And then we can probably just extrude this upwards on the Z axis. And then let's just scale it down, uh, scale it in like this, and just kind of line that up here. So that's how you get this ancient uh, Roman or ancient Greek. I'm not really sure what kind of style this is, but this type of pillar where it's like all these nice lines across here. And of course, we could bevel this as well. So maybe let's just throw in a, a bevel modifier. And we'll just apply the scale and then lower the amount. Again, holding shift to get a more precise slider here. And then you could increase the segments past one, but I don't think it's going to be that important, like you're not really going to be able to tell for at least what I'm using it for. So I'll leave this on just one segment. So you can see it might be hard to, to see what that's doing, but you can see the bevel just in in here, what that's doing, right? Okay, so there's another easy variation you can do for like these kinds of pillars. Um, I might move that over here. And then if we want to have another one with a bit more detail, you know, you could of course go in and customize this however you want and add variation to all these. So for example, maybe you want to have some loop cuts in here. Uh, let's just take these edges right here that I made. These ones, let's bevel this with one segment. And then just extrude that, scale it in. And then maybe just take these edges here. Oops, these ones. And then let's just, uh, let's just control B. First of all, make sure the scale is applied again. Let's apply scale. And then I'll just do like a very simple one segment bevel as well and then we could have like another variation of that right so pretty easy and of course you know you could do the same thing with these and and add loops and bevels and do all sorts of crazy variations there too i'll just leave it simple for now with uh just this setup and i'll move that off to the side you might have a modifier on this one you might have a modifier on this one and you might have a modifier on all these things if you join it with modifiers turned on um with af with like active modifiers like a bevel or something very often uh, that will just not work when you join it. So it's important to apply all modifiers before you join these separate pieces together. So you can go in and just apply this uh, one by one here if you want, like by clicking apply here, or you can just select all the pieces you want to apply all the modifiers to. Right click, convert to mesh. This is kind of meant for converting curves into meshes, but a side effect of doing this because we're converting a mesh just into a mesh again, which is, seems pointless. But a side effect of doing this is it just auto applies all modifiers for all the selected things you have at once. So that's really handy. And then we can just select uh, everything. 
the last piece you have selected will be where the origin is, but it doesn't really matter because we can move it later anyway. So I'll just hit Control J. Now we're going to have some shading issues, but if I just right click and shade auto smooth, there we go. And now we have this as one object, which is very handy. And I can do that for all these two. Okay, let's move on to an archway and let's just talk about how uh, to make archways because it's pretty easy too. So I might start with a circle here as well. And I don't think I need 64. No, actually, I will leave it on 64. That's probably a good amount for this because I'm actually going to go in and delete half of these vertices anyways. So if I just go to edit mode, if I just go to edit mode on that circle and I delete uh, half of these vertices, that will actually give us a starting point for the archway. So I'll leave the halfway point like these ones in and I'll delete everything below that. So delete these. And then I might just rotate this 90 degrees on the X axis. So it's facing this way. And let's take these two points here and let's just extrude it downwards on the Z axis. And you can see where this is going now. If I just take all this and then maybe extrude it out on the Y axis. Uh, let's add a solidify modifier. That will just give us thickness. You could also just press Alt E to extrude faces along normals. It does the same thing. So somewhere there, there is just going to be nice, I think. Seems fine. I might just increase the thickness this way. Let's apply the scale, and that's going to just mess with this a bit. Okay, seems fine. I can always change this later. Let's apply this. So Control A to apply the modifier. And then let's just apply the scale as well. So just apply scale just to make sure that any bevels I do after this are going to be the correct proportion and not going to be all like skewed weirdly. So to add detail to this, we can actually probably just use the same bevel technique that I did on those pillars there. So we can just select this row of edges along here, maybe along here as well. And then we can just hit uh, control B. I'll just go to solid mode and then control B and then increase those segments. And our custom bevel is still there from last time. So I'll just do that right there. So it looks pretty nice. I'm going to right click shade auto smooth. Although I should probably do that later at the end. Now I don't really like having just 90 degree hard edges like this. So I'll just do a quick bevel on here as well with maybe just one segment because I do want it to be pretty square still, but I don't want it to be fully a 90 degree corner. So we'll just do a quick bevel there. Maybe I'll add an edge loop here as well. And then we can, um, we can just uh, bevel that and then maybe just extrude it in this way. Now doing that is going to mess up uh, the bottom faces here, like the topology, because now we're getting like overlapping faces and it's not that good. But honestly, we can probably just delete this, uh, these faces here, and then fill them in later. I might take uh, these edges on the inside here, these ones here. I'll uh, alt click along there to, to just select the edges of that bevel we just made. And... Uh, Let's just bevel this too. So we'll just uh, do that. I could do a bunch of these or I could just leave it on one. It might be fine with just one segment. Let's do that. And then on the bottom here, if we really want, we can just select. Um, I think we have to delete these faces too because this is causing some, causing some problems. I'll just go in here and uh, kind of just clean this up a little bit. So I'll just select this, this, and this on both sides, delete faces. And now we can just alt click along this edge, fill that with a face. That's just F, F on the keyboard to fill that with a face. Uh, come along here, same thing, F, fill with a face. Pretty easy. Okay, we've got a nice little archway that we can use uh, to combine with these pillars or something else. And of course you could go in and decorate this however you want. If you wanna do some little design at the top or whatever you want, you can go in and customize this to however you want. So I might just do an example here by doing this. And maybe, uh, maybe we could do the, the sides as well. And now it gets tricky beveling, stuff like this. I might just do one segment here. Uh, let's apply scale. Just kind of bring that down. Okay, good enough, right? So there's just a nice little archway. Let's just apply scale and join these. There's no modifiers to apply, so we're all good there. And I might just want to set the origin to the bottom because it, it's kind of annoying. Like if you're placing this around and then you want it to be smaller, if you scale it, it's going to be scaling from this point right here. Whereas I kind of wanted to scale when I scale it down, I want it to go from the bottom kind of like this one is. 
So if you just go to options up here, I'm in object mode. If you go to options here, turn on effect only origins, you can actually just pull this right to the bottom. It doesn't need to be super precise. You can just kind of go roughly at the bottom and then turn that off. And then now when I scale it, it'll just be from the bottom right there. Okay, so now we can combine these in many different ways. So for example, we can do this and kind of just copy this over here, or maybe we want uh, to make a variation of this and duplicate it over itself and have like a bigger one that's kind of like overhanging like this. And then we can fix the bottom there if we want later. But there's many ways you can combine these to make like a bunch of different structures and you can combine it with like, if we just take this, that could be a new piece. We could join that together. We could use an array on that, right? And maybe we could ha have like something kind of coming off of this, like some sort of platform, just use a cube, just use a cube and like have it over this and maybe just scale that up like this way, right? I'll, I'm just showing you kind of an example of like some things you could do with this, but maybe uh, let's just do this. Maybe let's take this edge, supply scale, bevel this edge with that same custom bevel I was doing before, pull this out this way, right? And then that could maybe go up here too and like have uh, two of them. And then maybe we want a hallway. So uh, let's like pull this this way and maybe we could just do this, duplicate it, flip it, right? And then all of a sudden you have like a big structure that you've made from just a couple of small pieces and then combining them with like a few cubes here and there, right? So you can see this is very powerful if you just have a few models that you're working with. Um, you don't even need that many to build out a scene. I'll just show you another really quick thing you can do here. I might just uh, convert this to mesh. So I'll just I'll make sure this is unlinked. Uh, let's convert to mesh. So it applies all modifiers. So convert to mesh. And I know I'm getting like, I'm just going faster, kind of rapid fire, but I just want to show you kind of just some cool things that you can try on your own. Uh, without really going into detail. Okay, so let's just, let's join that to one object. And then if we want it to maybe curve around, what if we take a, let's try a simple deform modifier and let's just apply the scale and rotation. Maybe not rotation, actually. I'll just keep it rotated this way for now. And let's switch this over to bend. And then I want it to bend on the Z axis. Let's apply scale and now rotation. Now, the there's enough geometry in here except for on the platform, so I'll just add some loop cuts there so that it has some resolution to actually bend. So it's not just trying to bend a square. And then we can actually just do maybe, let's do negative, negative 180. That should give us a perfect arch here. Might have to manually kind of like rotate this into place. That's fine though. Right around there. And then that is now just like a curved, nice thing that you can attach to somewhere else, right? So from that one or from those two pieces that we made over here, We've got a whole thing that I can use to set up an entire scene uh, really, really easily, right? And this could be duplicated upwards and it could be, you know, you can make a whole structure out of just a few small pieces. Now, imagine what happens if you spend more than like three minutes modeling, modeling like I did here, right? You can make a lot of crazy stuff. Okay, so just a quick example of how you could texture this. Uh, I'll just drop in a free texture from Polyhaven. This is their paid add-on, it's like 30 bucks, but all the textures here you can actually just get for free on their website from them. Uh, so I'll just drop in something here. I'll just search for concrete and I'll just take one of these, uh, I think this one here, drop that on. Again, you can just download this from their website. Uh, that's actually the wrong one. I want this one here. So a basic concrete texture. Uh, yours will not be unwrapped. So you could just do either a smart UV project or just a cube project, it doesn't really matter. Um, you could spend time unwrapping it properly too if you want. I'll just do a really quick one for this demonstration though. And you could just stop there, honestly. I'm going to throw in some, I have this uh, Edgeware node that I uh, made earlier. This is something I showed in my last texturing video. So you, if you want to learn how to make Edgeware like this, you can go watch that video. Uh, it's, a, it's pretty much the same thing as that. So you can just drop something like that on, throw on some ambient occlusion, right? And uh, you're good to go. Like you, you don't really have to do too much there to get a nice looking texture. And that's it. Right, basic unwrap with a, a smart UV project or a cube projection. Uh, throw on a basic free texture, and you're good. And maybe maybe edgeware if you really need it. But yeah, okay. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna end this one there. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. But if you want to learn how I texture objects, uh, there's another video I just made recently texturing something very similar to this. So you can go watch that if you want. Um, I'll probably do an updated video on texturing soon. But for now, you can just go watch that one. And yeah, enjoy. Uh, enjoy just making cool stuff like this because it's pretty easy once you get the hang of like how to make shapes like this. I want to mention one thing before I end the video, which is um, 
a lot of this stuff that I make is pretty much just cubes and circles and like c cylinders, like pretty much cubes and circles, right? Like this, the thing we just made here is a circle cut in half extruded. This is just a cylinder, which is just a, just a circle extruded upwards with another circle there, which is beveled with, with a cube on top. Uh, and then that just gets, you know, this thing here on top, this is just a cube beveled. This same thing, it's just a circle. We did a, you know, minor variation to the circle to get it to be like a bit pokey, but it's still just a circle. Everything is just circles and squares, basically. Um, and once you kind of, once you can kind of see the primitive shapes, like the, if you go to here to mesh these, once you can see these basic shapes in more complex objects, modeling becomes very, very simple uh, because you can just see, boom. Okay, you're looking at a reference. You can say, boom, that's a square, that's a circle. Let's combine it in this way. Uh, just stretch it out. It's a half circle there, half square there, right? Like it's it's, if you can break it down into its more simple shapes, it becomes so much easier to model like this. Um, and there's so many things you can make from just simple cubes and circles. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm gonna end it here. Thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, if you wanna learn texturing, I'll link uh, my, my texturing video below here somewhere. And yeah, take care, bye.